Hi everyone, it's Penny, and I'm back today doing a couple of video, I think, series on creating whimsical girls. You can call them dolls, you can call them little girls, but I am drawn to them and I'm not really sure why, unless it is just the feeling I had of being a little girl and being carefree and thinking I could do anything, be anything, and accomplish anything. And I think when we get to be adults, we lose touch with that and remember it and kind of miss it. So I'm starting out my pages with a coating of acrylic paint mixed with gesso. And I've used a, a beautiful aqua color that Jane Davenport has in her acrylic tube series. And um, I will put a link below uh, where you can purchase those if you would like to have them. Also, while I'm at it, um, if you enjoy this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe at the end. And if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified when I put up new videos, which is a couple of times a week. So I have prepped my two pages and I begin just drawing my little figure lightly in, in pencil. I'm just going to do face for now. And I start with just little oval shapes and I put the eyes about halfway down. And if I want to make them more whimsical and less realistic, then I space the eyes closer to the edges of the face like I've done here. And it just makes it a little bit more whimsical. I might go into a video later for when you want to do a more realistic face and the proportions you would need for that. So now I just put out some of my um, paints and I want to fill in for the faces. Jane Davenport has a wonderful paint collection of four tubes that have uh, skin tones in them. And I use them and mix them with gesso to create the faces. Now what I want to do here is a very loose painterly type of face. By that I mean everything's not going to be uh, a smooth finish and one color's not going to blend just seamlessly into the next. It's sort of a patchwork feel to it. And this particular figure is inspired by Mindy Lacefield, an artist. And I like her style. Um, she mimics the looseness that I like in paintings. And so I decided to try um, a little girl kind of based on, on what she does. Now, I'm going to say loosely based because she might look at this and go, don't blame me for that. <laughs> um, but I'm just playing. I want to get... Um, different colors in on her face. Sometimes we think faces can only be realistic colors, but actually when you're looking at pictures of faces, um, depending on shadows and lighting, there are a multitude of colors in a face, not just peach or bronze or whatever skin tone the person might happen to be. So I really love the idea of adding lots of different colors in on a face. And so I'm just playing around with her, lots and lots of layers. Uh, I take my little cut up credit card from time to time and I, I scratch over it. And what that does is it just makes me not try to get it too perfect. It just smears everything. You know what I mean? And uh, then I go back in and add a little bit more definition to the top of that. And so that's what I do here. Sometimes I use my credit card. As you can see here, a lot of times I use my finger because fingers are wonderful for smearing. So um, she's, she's just a, a nice, loose little girl. So just a few more little details on her nose and cheeks and I'm going to wrap her up and start on my next one. Now I dug out some old art journals and I found this little drawing I had done several years ago. So I want to do a little sketch based on her. So I begin the face and I'm going to go about it pretty much like I did the first little girl. But I am going to make her features more like the ones in the drawing that I just showed you. So I add different values of skin tones around and now I'm just going to put the colors and the different values into her face um, with pinks and, and other colors that you might not normally think of her faces. And again just working it in very loosely, very painterly. I'll use my fingers just to barely blend at times. And I add here, you see I add some turquoise like I did on the first girl. I'll loosely put in her hair. And then I will go back and just keep adding layers until I get it to the way I want it. And if I get tempted to make it a little bit too perfect, 
then I will purposely smear and mess things up and go back over them in a much looser pattern because that's the type of the style of painting I'm going for here with these figures. Now when you're playing you can do whatever you want to do. You can make them um, very realistic looking with all the colors just blended just so and that's fine. I've done that too. But today I'm just wanting to keep it loose. So this is a little girl based on a picture I believe of my daughter when she was little and I sketched it many years ago <laughs> and I have journals floating around here some of them aren't quite completed um, and I'm thinking about going back in and just painting some of the drawings that I did and reusing those journals um, this one was done in a moleskin journal that had thicker pages so if I paint it I'll probably want to just sew first to create a nice layer um, and for whatever reason, I'm going back over the first girl. Maybe I, I think I wanted her to have a little bit brighter cheeks. And so I decided to go back in and, and do a little bit on both of them at the same time. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to wrap up this little girl. And as always, thank you for joining me. And if you enjoyed this and want to see the next one, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And please feel free to leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. Here are the Jane Davenport paints I used in this, and I'll see you next time.